They've been World War III drumming because there's been a, a lot going on in Eastern Europe, a bad place, all right, sometimes. I had to put out a tweet recently about it. I I'm sorry, but it's just true. There's, there's nothing that I could do. Uh, weird how all these European countries keep trying to get into wars and killing each other in their own communities. There has to be something wrong with their culture, don't you think? And I'm thinking, there's gotta be something wrong with their culture or something. Many people are talking about different things. It could be their genes, it, you know, it, 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 their, their culture. That they uh, that they've created the skull shape has also come up we're not sure just yet scientists are still looking into it but what i do know is that they're causing a lot of problems for not only themselves but the world i mean listen what was the what was the, uh, the last time that eastern europe was doing a bunch of crazy shit uh, what happened we got world war ii they're doing it again and they're thinking about giving us world war three so uh, to keep up with what's happening let's talk about that for a moment in time okay listen so there's a country it's called ukraine and there's another country wild i know it's called europe that was, a, that was a slip up. I have no clue why I said Europe. I was going to say Russia. So there's two countries, okay? One called Ukraine and the other one is called Russia. Yeah, new country just dropped. And so they've been, they've been going at it for a little while. Uh, ever since the European Union broke up and a bunch of smaller countries spawned from the USSR dissolving, like Belarus, it has a much closer relationship with Russia today than the Ukraine does. They're more adversarial to each other these days, but you know, they're all separate countries still. And so they've been, they, they, they've been at odds because the Ukraine has had its own identity for a while. They set up their own country. They're a large Russian speaking nation. Russia is their main language. Is that right? Um, that's their, that's their like official language. Is it, or is there another language as well? Is it EU? I said our EU originally in the Soviet Union. Listen, they were part of the Soviet Union, Soviet Union dissolved. And now we have Belarus and now we have Ukraine. Ukrainian is the main language, but Russian is a minority language. Okay. So they're like U Ukrainian and Russian. Okay. Most common. Okay. I just want to make sure. I know they have a very large Russian speaking population, even though it's not like the main language, but they have a large Russian speaking population. I hope everyone's keeping up with learning time. And so they've been at odds because the Ukraine has been really wanting to shift itself more westward, economically, socially, diplomatically, get closer to countries in uh, Western Europe uh, that, that we, you know, know of. Cause I know ain't nobody knows shit about Eastern Europe. Ain't nobody know about those little ass countries. Ain't, and ain't nobody care. Ain't that right? But now we have to care cause like nukes are involved and that's kind of really unfortunate. But Ukraine has been wanting to do something really big that the, that Russia does not like. And that is join the EU, the big conglomerate of unified countries, the UK, but mostly England decided to yeet themselves from Ukraine really wanted to be a part of that and NATO as well. And so while and make sure, let, let me know if I have this right. Ukraine is not a part of NATO and the UK is not a part of the EU. They're not a part of either, but I do know they're like heavily affiliated with both. I'm not sure if they're like an official member of either. I know they're not an official member of the of nato yet correct okay they're affiliated yes they're like they're heavily connected they aren't officially apart yet and russia doesn't want them to be uh for you know reasons they don't want to be that close to like western countries the you the uh, the the big evil being the u.s that we have the most amount of like military resources to throw around and we can set up a lot of you can set up a lot of shit in in uh, the ukraine which is pretty close to russia it's almost touching it it's pretty wild wild stuff right there but uh the U i'm pretty sure the ukraine got denied from uh, either nato or the eu specifically because they haven't rooted out enough corruption uh like the eu has a couple of standards the ukraine is you know it's a relatively new democracy uh to, to come about and so they they're still working through like a lot of bumps in the road uh they just kicked out like the old president who's really who really wanted to fortify their connections with the old russian empire and in moscow uh, the the people of the country didn't like that at all they got he got, he got his ass kicked out and now they got a new boy in there who really is leaning towards the west the eu and nato yes they got rejected from the eu they have they got they got dumb that one must that one must sting because greece is in the eu hey listen it's up okay we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about the greasy boy later let's talk about greasy later all right <laughs> talk talk about corruption you talk a little bit about corruption the president in the ukraine seinfeld i love it all right i think it's pretty good so listen all right this is causing a lot of tension between russia and ukraine uh russia really wants to reassert their dominance i know putin really wants to reassert his dominance in the area and reclaim a lot of the russian empire reclaim a lot of the ussr's lost territory to the countries that spawned from it Ukraine being one of them, uh, Belarus has a, are, like I said, has a really close connection, so they don't, you know, they don't have to like do too much there. Um, they can basically go in and out of Belarus as they basically please. But you, the Ukraine is much different. They don't have a very nice relationship with each other. In 2014, you may have heard this. Crimea was a little place, a little, um, little tiny peninsula place in the west of Ukraine where their president got kicked out. Uh, there's a lot of political turmoil. And so 
Putin used that time with political turmoil to basically invade little Crimea and uh, just kind of, is it east? I thought it was west, west part of Ukraine. Is it the east part of Ukraine? Am I, have I been bamboozled? Oh, you know what? I had it, I had it flipped. My, my shit was flipped. Yeah, yeah, some more, some more lefty disinfo, but I got it. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little tiny little peninsula. Uh, Ukraine still maintains control officially, but the de facto government is uh, the Russian government. And so they, they rolled their shit on in. They closed the place up. There's talks of this could have been, a, 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 this could be, a, this could spark another war. Luckily that didn't happen. But because of all of that, the Ukraine basically lost near all control of little baby Crimea. And Russia has now yoinked it. They've yoinked it and they've sploinked it. And uh, there's nothing basically they can do. They put up a massive ass fence. Uh, it's like it's, it's, it's like the Berlin Wall too. Electric like Boogaloo. We see uh, Putin. He's uh, he's taking after his ancestors. It runs in the family. Uh, you know, stays in the culture. It's just it's just ingrained in them to set up like a big ass wall for uh, for land that they want. It's just it's just what they do. Okay. It's a, it, it's in their. You can read it in their skull shape. Many people are saying this. Almost an island, an island, but connected. Wild shit. I know. I was pretty surprised when I found that out too. Hospitality. Yeah, we, that's what we call a little Slavic hospitality. And so that leads up to today with recently, uh, Russia has started to mobilize troops on the border of Ukraine. And so in response, the Ukraine has started to mobilize troops on, on the border of Russia, basically. Uh, Russia has sent down at least 100,000 soldiers and armaments and things along those lines for 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 a little bit of war in, a little bit of a uh, little bit of fighting, a little, little tussling little wrestling and the ukraine has been helped by nato's allied countries us for one they've been sending up a lot of supplies and it's been a big political mess massive political mess with the ukrainian government at the moment trying its best to keep their citizens calm in this moment they've sent, been sending out a lot of messages to like calm the air stop people from freaking out as much because there's an idea that putin's trying to use this again this political turmoil to get more things from the West to get more things from Ukraine. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if Ukraine, think about it, if the, if the Ukraine becomes a part of the EU, becomes a part of NATO, that means a lot of NATO and, and weapons and armaments are going to be very close, much closer to Russia. And Putin wants as little influence to no influence of like Western governments to be in Eastern Europe, period. So it's important for him to make sure that the Ukraine is not a part of nato so this is beneficial to him uh, this this uh a lot of this turmoil it puts a there's a massive wrench in all the gears of the issues um that the ukraine is experiencing now as far as i've read the u.s hasn't been helping out too much uh not only has biden been saying that a russian invasion is uh, imminent but also we've been we've pulled out our families from the ukraine embassy there both moves that the ukrainian president has said have been way too quick and um, not helping the situation at all i'm sure they're just doing nothing they're just pogging they're they're just pogging the thing is a hundred thousand troops is not enough for a full-scale land invasion of ukraine as per ukrainian officials have said ukraine has about two hundred thousand troops mobilized if i remember correctly uh they said that uh, russia has not developed a single actual strike force which is something that you would need to start to you know strike you need a force to do that uh, they're just kind of there th standing there menacingly uh, they haven't developed a strike force yet they're just kind of standing at the border and they're staring at each other menacingly and it's not it's not something anybody like nato has said that they would that they're willing to step in if anything happens and i personally from reading and and, and thinking about this and think of that like the history and everything i don't want to be a part of the problem and i will say i think a lot of the people who've been world worth redrumming have kind of been a part of the problem i feel like it's been sensationalized a little bit what's going on not because it's not a dangerous situation. It's 100% a dangerous situation. But I feel like it's been getting, it, it's been portrayed as like any moment now, like a leaf, like a leaf falls from a tree, a, a soldier accidentally steps on a branch and now, it, it, and then like nukes are being fired. I, I think that's, it, it. it's a little bit too much. It's not good for anyone. And honestly, it's really good for Putin because the more discontent, the more discord that simply standing there at the border of Ukraine can cause the more leverage that he has the, the more leverage he has in negotiations with keeping nato and the u.s out of eastern europe because they sent a massive list of demands to the u.s to to not aggress against the ukraine and now they have more power with that um to remove troops from the border of ukraine there's a long list i don't remember exactly exactly everything that was in there but i do know one thing was that to remove all nato influence from all of eastern europe not just some of it all of it remove all of it from eastern europe also uh, make a legal document make it legally binding that the U that, that the ukraine is unable 100 to join nato uh and the eu 
both of them uh, just completely block off this country from being able to engage in the uh, trade and the alliances that they want to because they don't want obviously they don't want them to be a part of it i just got out of draft aid putin and psychological war- warfare are massive fuck buddies and they've been since like kgb days oh yeah it's a lot of psychological warfare i mean k- think of it right massive massive nuclear power you know russia isn't like that that like big they're not like that rich but they have a lot of nukes <laughs> they got a lot of nukes sitting around and they've been basically mini warring with this country for a little while if you can set up a bunch of troops and just stand there for a while and get some concessions out of the west basically it's it's free clout on top of the fact that he's making it he's he's been making it seem like ever since he put uh, troops on the border he's been portraying it to the national people that nato they could they could come in at any moment they're trying to destroy us um uh the the u.s the the big enemy are here at any moment they could try to do something and we're just trying to protect ourselves and so he can get some good clout from that from from the citizenry and he can push around the west a little bit to get some more concessions from them which is exactly what he wants so without any other bargaining power he can threaten dropping the world into an entire war uh which isn't something that you know anybody really wants i i would say personally and you know that honestly you know, the 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 idea of like a massive nuclear winter for the entire planet it actually is kind of like a good bargaining chip uh, a little bit. And it only gets stronger the more people freak out about it. So I would implore you to have like a little bit of calm about the situation, honestly, because this is something that Russia does a lot. They use a cyber attack here to use disinformation and a cyber campaign to sow discontent in the country. They did the same thing in Ukraine. They're like what the Ukraine is fearing at the moment isn't necessarily a land invasion, but they said what they're fearing a lot is a hybrid invasion. That's like uh, a lot of like psychological and cyber warfare that that could be held in the country from Russian operatives. And that's what they're really worried about, which can coincide with a a, a, a land evasion as well. So it's it, it's important to have like a little bit of calm here. You don't you don't want to go. You don't want to go too sensationalist, you know? I mean, at this very moment, uh, they had like a good, they had good talks. They did. Uh, Russia, Ukraine, and NATO, and I think the US as well, who were the main drivers, were having some talk. They're looking for a diplomatic end to this. And you know what? I'm not, the talks didn't go like necessarily perfectly. We didn't fix everything, but we're set up for a new set of talks in two weeks at the moment. If I can, uh, what? I don't have it on me. Yeah, but we're set up for more talks in two weeks, okay? So I, I would I would implore you not to freak out too much. All right. If you're like, holy shit, like this, this could be like the, the end of days. We're going to see a new world war. These goddamn Europeans are going to try to like destroy the world again. Yeah. Cameraman dog moment. Yeah. What are you doing? Stinky. So yeah. Uh, be wary of like sensationalism. Keep a keep a level head. OK, because honestly, it's not as bad as it seems. This is just this is just Russia doing what Russia does. And we're just going to have to work out something with with Russia to make them a little bit more happy with the situation. Obviously, we can't give them everything. We don't want to give them everything. Obviously, fucking not. And the Ukraine should be able to have the its agency to be able to join the uh, NATO if it wants. But they're portraying, but Russia's portraying themselves as a massive victim in in this situation. And I think freaking out about it only makes it worse because Biden going out saying that uh, war could be imminent, saying that if if uh, and anything happens, we'd be we'd be sending a lot of arms. There's been a lot of like a discussion about whether or not it would be feel like escalation if other countries, a part of NATO would be sending arms to Ukraine, how that would look, how that would deal with like the situation. And we're just not sure. It's really difficult to say. It's a really difficult thing to talk about. And I'm no like, you know, foreign policy expert from what I know and from what I've read and from the history that I've taken. I, I would say that I-, I don't see Russia holding like a fucking full scale invasion of Ukraine. I just don't. I just don't see it. It'd be a really dumb move by Putin. And we can say a lot of things about Putin, but he's not that stupid. What it reminds me a lot of actually is uh, North Korea, how like North Korea sends uh, a lot of missiles over Japan and in South Korea all the time. I don't think that Kim Jong-un is going to be nuking Japan or South Korea anytime soon. You you know, I, I just I just highly doubt it or bombing them anytime soon or like invading them anytime soon. That's not going to happen. A lot of this is for like massive dick waving. This is just dick waving. We're seeing a bunch of people waving day dick and he's like, sick, stay back. I'll pee. I got I got a whole lot of pee loaded up, okay? And I haven't drunk water in three days. That shit's gonna look like goddamn sludge. You you don't you don't want a part of it. Got my rat tat tat gun. I'd be pumping out goddamn kidney stones on your ass, right? And so you don't you don't want that. I don't want that personally. And so you can just kind of wave that around. You can you can disincentivize other countries from like messing with you, putting on new sanctions, uh blockades, because you know, what can you do? We have this power, we can do something. Cause I think Russia and Russia and South Russia and North Korea both know if they actually tried shit like that, that they would just be wiped off the map they would just be gone okay you can talk about some mutually assured destruction sure like the 
it, it'd be pretty bad for everyone, but they would just be gone. <laughs> just, and they would just, <laughs> it'd just be gone. And honestly, I'm not sure. China loves to have like a little bit of a uh, uh, buffer from the West as well, just like Russia does uh, wh when it comes to like NATO and, and them on their border. So they don't want like South Korea to become all of the Korean peninsula. peninsula. But I find it hard to, to see like Xi Jinping backing up like really strongly the North Korean government and they do something as like insane as that they just get fucking rolled they just get rolled same with Russia they can't they, they can't like keep up like a, a full scale invasion they just fucking can't their economy just can't take it <laughs> they, they don't have enough troops they don't have enough money to just keep that type of stuff going that would compete with NATO or the US they just fucking can't so it would just be it would turn to nukes if things got like bad enough but I'm, but I just, you know, just for me personally, I just don't see us getting there at this moment. Obviously anything, anything could change. We, none of us can tell the future, but I would say, you know, keep, keep a level head, you know, the, the likelihood of you being uh, of us, like going to war and goddamn Russia's, I, I think is like pretty low. This is just a lot of posturing to get concessions out of the U S and NATO to be able to be in a better financial and in like geopolitical position when it comes to opposing the U.S. and, and other Western countries. Actually, I have a lot of nuclear defense in Japan and America and Europe, so we may dodge the direct impact of cities, but we'd still take an L uh, from famines and stuff. It would be pretty cringe. Now, I don't I don't want it to turn into like a like a fucking courage the cowardly dog episode where the corn and the goddamn aubergines, the eggplants rise up and try and kill us or some shit. I'm, I'm not sure if that may happen. It may happen or not. I'm, I'm just not sure uh, when it comes to like the nuclear fallout, okay? I don't want like Chernobyl chew, electric boogaloo. I don't want to find that shit out, but it's going to have to see. I think that this is just a lot of posturing to make people scared. So you know, take a second, take a deep breath. I think we're all going to be okay. You probably won't be drafted. You, you'll be okay. You'll get to play more games of League of Legends. I promise. That's the war that you can fight. The war with your with your depression and self-hatred because you play League of Legends. There you go. I'm proud of you, okay? Anything uh, anything else we need to touch on on this topic? I think we, I think we covered our bases. I honestly think that, that we were way closer to like nukes being thrown in like in, in like the 80s and 90s than we are today. If you look a few years, it happens. It's a little media cycle thing. Oh, it goes back and forth. It makes a lot of dollars. People think that they're going to be nuked. Make, make some make some money, you know, get some clout make some money, things a little wacky. And then, uh, and then you go back to, uh, business as usual, which is forgetting that, uh, Eastern Europe exists. That's the good ending and the pendulum do be swinging. I would see, rather see a second sunrise in NYC than play, uh, league unironically. That'd be pretty bad. That'd be, that'd be pretty fucky wucky manufactured consent. They are, they are trying to spook you. 